Welcome to Abundant Life Family Podcast. We're trying to help you build families that last. My name is Bill. And I'm Jen. We're the Hilda Brands, and what we want to do is walk through the 10 mile markers. Mm -hmm. And in these mile markers, we're on number three today. We want to focus on salvation and baptism. Mm -hmm. Chad Glover, our teaching pastor at Abundant Life, is going to be sharing some exciting things that have to do with seeing your child saved and baptized. We want to thank you and welcome you to Abundant Life's Family Podcast. And what we are about is helping to build families that last. So we want to help you to build your family in such a way that it'll last and endure the storms of life. I know that my wife and I, Jen, so glad to have you with us. And uh, the things that we faced and done together, yep. boy, good things, good things, hard things. But yes. most of it, we look back and think, oh, God, you are too good. And we're, we're so thankful. We're very blessed. Absolutely. And uh, when we talk about mile markers and the fact that we have 10 mile markers, mm -hmm. Abundant Life has targeted that we want to make sure that families know and understand to see those as a roadmap. Today, we're going to focus on the third mile marker, salvation and baptism. And I know that with salvation, you know, all four of our kids, mm -hmm. um, you got a huge instrumental part of that role. Um, what happened with our kids? Yeah, well, all our kids are different, and um, but probably the one that um, probably impacted me the most was just that. Oh, I'm already going to drink my coffee. I'm going to drink your coffee. <laughs> Bill was on a missions trip, and our son just came and was like, "Mom, you know, I I want to know more about you. You and Dad talk about salvation and knowing the Lord and." So I just had the real sweet privilege of him crawling into bed with me and being able to tell him about Jesus. And um, he prayed right there um, that night. And I remember calling Bill and saying, Brayden just accepted the Lord. And he was like, oh no, I'm in Mexico. But it was such a powerful time because you always think as a parent, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but just being available and having that opportunity to just share that with Brayden in a very just real way, you know, just at night in our bed. It was just really sweet. I'll tell so. you what, as a youth pastor, it mm. always happens when I'm in Mexico. It does. There are so many things that have happened while I was in Mexico. It's true. Yeah. But anyway, I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. And it's great to have Chad with us today and uh, looking yeah. forward to what you have to say about also about salvation with your own kids. Now you're married, your wife, Chelsea, yep. you guys have three kids together and, and yep. what's that look like? So y'all are, y'all have all boys, right? All well, boys. We do. Yeah. So, um, you know, if you're watching this, you've got the whole shebang right now. You got, you know, this couple, they're expert on all things in the male species. Yes. And then I'm a minority in a sorority. And so that's something I like to say a lot. Um, and so we've got all girls. We've been married 15 years, three little girls, 11, 10 and six. And y'all been married a few more years than 15. Just How long have y'all been married? You. It'll be 32 in just wow. a little yes. bit here. Experts right here. Uh, yeah, so three girls, and we've had the privilege of leading, leading them all to Christ. And um, and so uh, can I share a little bit about that experience? And I think people are tuning in to this and watching and that. listening and going, okay, that's great that y'all 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 got y'all's kids saved. <laughs> Maybe they're sitting there thinking, how do I get my kids saved? You know. And, and so yeah. we want to share just a couple of things that have been really, really impactful and equip you to be the parent that God's called you to be. And I know that the Hilda Brands are here um, and talking about leading their kids to Christ. It was such an exciting time. And what a privilege, you know, that God it would was. use you yeah. to lead your kid to Christ. And if you're watching this and you're thinking, I don't know if I'm the best person to lead my kid to Christ. Well, welcome to the club. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we've all felt that you're way. You're in good company. Yes. And uh, there's an insecurity that comes with, with living on mission. I think that most mm. people feel. And then when you're thinking it's your own kids, you're like, man, I don't want to mess them up, you right. know? And so do I say the right thing? Maybe I should just outsource this to the professional. Mm. I think it's so common in our culture. We live in like an outsourcing culture where, 
you know, maybe you're, they're doing the dishes right now and you're, you're trying to get things ready because you've got piano lessons and, mm -hmm. and you're taking your kid to the person who's the master at piano and yeah. so teach them piano or I think one of y'all's kids played rugby um, yeah. and uh, so you probably when that time came all four of them oh they all played rugby mm -hmm. <laughs> good 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 for y'all and so we're a ballet family so anyway <laughs> you know I think culturally we would take them to rugby lessons or we would take them for us we would take them to ballet lessons mm -hmm. and so I think naturally uh, parents are, are listening to this or watching this and they're thinking well if, if it's spiritual then I need to take them to the spiritual mm -hmm. professional and because if it's piano I take them to the piano professional if it's ballet I take them to the ballet professional if it's school I take them to the school spiritual but you know naturally I yeah. take them to the spiritual professional and I would just say don't do that don't Amen. miss out on Love that. the you know the the uh, little son in your yes. bed moment and getting to nurture his little heart yes. don't miss out on that God wants to right. use you to be the yeah. primary faith trainer of your kids and, and you're not gonna be perfect, none of us are, but God's gonna use you in spite of your imperfections. I love what you're saying there, that it's not up to the pastors to be the professional, it's mm. up to the parents, you know? And yeah. we as the professionals, we're simply a tool in the toolbox. Right, yeah. you know? that's what we're doing right now. Yeah. You right. know, we're, we're here trying to equip you uh, with some things of encouragement and also just kind of a pathway so that you can celebrate this mile marker in your life. So let's talk about that real quick, all right? Yeah, so exactly. we've got salvation. Uh, God wants to use you. We've already got that established, and so go for it. <laughs> you know, That's be right. ready, be prepared for those moments and nurture those moments when they come. Mm -hmm. um, here's a couple things I would encourage people to do. First of all, pray. Um, you know, yeah. we can't save our kids. The thing that we desperately want for them, we can't do. Nope. And we need God to do that. It is God that has to work in their life. And so um, avoid the pressure of feeling like you got to be God, you know, you got to be the Messiah. Yeah. And so I think that, you know, people are, are tuning into this and they're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I've got to do all this. I got to do it. Mm -hmm. And I would just say, you know, relax, pray. And what are you praying for? You're praying specifically in this mile marker for salvation. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're saying, God, would you ripen my child's heart? God, would you mm -hmm. open my child's heart mm -hmm. and would you ready them to hear the gospel? And then uh, you want to process the gospel with them. Um, what, what we did in our household, and when I say we, you know, Bill, you did a good job of, of, of elevating your, your bride in and, and just saying, you know, like may, God may have used her more <laughs> to lead your kids to Christ than you. And, yeah. and uh, I know that's definitely the case in, in our home, that my wife is such a faithful um, student of God's word, and she's such a great mother of our kids. And so one of the things we had is a child training Bible. I don't know if you've ever heard of this, um, but it's a really great resource. And it's like, a, uh, it's like a, a, a thing that you color code a Bible and you read certain things about like anger or um, obedience. And, and one of them is the gospel. And so the child training Bible takes you through key passages that walk you through the gospel story in the Bible. And so one of our kids, my wife, she's processing the gospel. Do you just get that at a bookstore? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. you, yeah. I think Amazon has it. And awesome. so, and okay. yeah, and then you get it and you set it up. So that's that's a great question. And so um, we're processing the gospel with the child training Bible, reading those explicit Bible verses. Um, and then things like um, the Jesus Storybook Bible. Oh, I love that. Um, and then that other- was your favorite. Yeah. Yeah. We use that a lot. Right, so you're just reading the Bible stories to your kid. And, and, and eventually the gospel is gonna be, you know, one of those stories. Mm -hmm. And um, so you wanna process the gospel. So pray that God would save them, process the gospel with them. <laughs> one of the, I, I, I think St. Augustine is an African theologian. I think he said this, y'all lived in Africa, y'all can appreciate just that. And we continent. know all yeah. things Africa. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So he said that the, that the Bible is like a pool of water that lambs can splash in, mm -hmm. but it's also, like a, it's also like a great vast body of water in which elephants can swim. And so the point that he's making is the gospel has so many things written about it, so complex, but it's so simple that a child can grasp it. Yeah. And so if you're scary. thinking how soon is too soon to start processing the gospel, I'd say when they're in the womb, read the stories Amen. to them, you know? That's right. And then as they get older, they're gonna start to be able to process some things. Research tells us that most kids, by the time they're eight or nine years old, mm -hmm are really ripe to the gospel. Yeah. And so if your kid is right around that second to third to fourth grade uh, zone, man, they're probably asking questions and I would say that they're perfectly capable to process the gospel with, and, uh, and I would encourage you to do that. And so when you're processing the gospel, you're reading the stories of the Bible and you're just allowing them to ask questions and you're nurturing them through that process. And then- Chad, how do you know? Yeah, that's what, what I was about what to turn the corner. questions do you even right? ask? So, so then you want to be like, what we did was like, I don't want to manipulate my kid into heaven, right. you know, cause that's not effective. Right. 
And uh, I don't want to go, hey, you don't want to go to hell, do you? You know, it's hot there and mom and dad won't be there. You know, and you pray this prayer. Like, I don't want to do that, okay? Uh, what I want to do is really help them see their need for salvation. Um, and the way we did that with our kids, I remember early on, I, I asked my first kid, Lydia, I said, hey, who's the biggest sinner in our house? Well, yeah, she points to me. <laughs> Because I'm, and, and, and when she said that, I was like, well, yeah, that's true. You know, I probably am the biggest sinner. But in her mind's eye, she was learning that big means size. And so I remember, you know, my, I was getting a little bit uh, frustrated trying to do the right thing. And my wife just kind of graciously pulled me over to the side, like y'all are so good at doing. And, and she just says, hey, I, I think I know what you're trying to do, but, but she doesn't understand what you're saying. And, uh, and so I, I rephrased the question and I said, who's committed the most sin in our house? And what I was trying to help uh, her come to the conclusion on her own is to see her need for salvation. And so um, we asked her that, and uh, we asked all of our kids that. And I remember one of our, I think our second kid, she's like, you know, when I said, who's committed the most sin? She said, well, uh, well, my sister has. And I was like, okay, well, you're not ready to receive Christ. And so I'm gonna ask you that question again in about a week. And so I just kind of faithfully asked that question during that time where she was open to the gospel. And eventually each one of my kids, here's what they said. They said, well, we've all committed the most sin. That's why we all need Jesus. And, um, and I was looking for an answer like that, or mm -hmm. I've personally That's committed good. the most sin yeah. in our house, you know, see my personal need for salvation. And so that to me is a really, really responsible question to ask so that your kid is not yeah. just kind of, you know, haphazardly going about this whole salvation thing. How old were your kids about? So we had one that was four. Okay. And then um, then the oldest would be six. Okay. And that was kind of our zone. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, you know, that was a good age for yeah. them. They understood their need. And, and every uh, family's gonna be different. Every family that. is yeah. gonna be different. Yeah. So, um, so once they, confess their need for salvation, we shared the gospel with them explicitly. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing that we used um, is the gospel bridge. Yeah. And the reason why I like that is because you're drawing a picture out and, um, and kids are, you know, especially with the younger they are, but most kids are gonna really learn through images better. Yeah. And the gospel Visual bridge, murder, um, I think we could probably put in the show notes or uh, put a link somewhere for people to get gospel bridge training. It's a real simple illustration, man on this side, God on this side, or however that's working out on this camera. Uh, Isn't that also in D1, D Discipleship 1, which is part of First Steps with Abundant Life? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a, definitely a play that we run a lot at Abundant Life. And right. so it's not in D1, it's in the next steps process. Okay. But if you, if you partner with Abundant Life, you're gonna hear the Gospel Bridge, I yep. promise you that. Yep. And the reason why we really uh, like that is because we believe it's, it's effective. And so I shared the gospel bridge with all of our kids. Um, and uh, well, I say I shared it with two of them. My wife shared with, with one of them because I was out of town on a youth, youth yeah, trip. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and so she led um, our firstborn to, to the Lord. And uh, yeah, so let me just kind of review real quick. So somebody's, again, they're driving. Uh, you may want to pause or go back and listen to this. And, and uh, you want to pray, God, God would you, would you yeah. move in my child's heart? You want to pray, mm -hmm. you know, take these matters to the Lord. Then you want to process the gospel, read the stories of the Bible, read the, read the gospel narrative with them. And, and then you want to um, help them see their need for salvation. So once they start asking questions, nurture those questions, but really help drive them towards, hey, do you really see your need for the Lord? And then but once Chad, they see their need. What do you need, do if they, you know, like how did, like you said, you deterred your daughter a little bit. Yeah. And then did you wrap back around then? Mm -hmm. Because then how do you reapproach that then? Yeah, I, what, what we did was um, we continued to pray, continue yep. to process okay. and nurture. Yeah. And, and so we were in a season where we were nurturing those questions and we just were faithful, yeah. you know, when the subject came up as we're doing a devotional or the something Holy like that. The Holy Spirit just guides and directs. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. And, and yeah, he, you know, he can make straight pass out of crooked that's sticks. Right. <laughs> and that's so right. that's what he, you know, that's what he does in so many ways. And so, um, but yeah, that's what we did. So we prayed, processed, helped them see their need for the gospel, and then we shared the gospel clearly. And, um, and then you lead them to, uh, to pray to receive Christ. And uh, so what, what we did is I had one of my children prayed her own prayer. It was such a sweet little prayer. I don't know if you've ever heard somebody pray a prayer of repentance. Yeah, it's so amazing. So and then I led um, my other children you know, to repeat after me. 
And uh, so that's salvation, man. That's what we did with our kids. I'm sure y'all had a similar experience with y'all's boys. And, um, and that I would mean, be- I mean, we weren't always the ones who had the privilege. Um, one of our sons was, um, it was his school teacher who led him to the Lord when he was in second grade. So, Praise God. I mean, it was really, it was really sweet for him to come home and, and be able to share that with us. And yet it was still a combination of praying. You know, we yeah, were praying for his praying. salvation, yep. helping him to process, but yep. yet God brought along somebody else. And that's why it's so important that uh, we promote connecting as, as Christians, being a part of a church family and being a yeah. part of a community, community. group, a yeah. connect group, you know? So um, I think somebody maybe is listening to this and like, okay, all right, that's salvation, but mm. like, when do we baptize? You know, and right. at, do we wait? You know, what do we do? Yeah. That sort of thing. And so, um, well, let me just kind of share what we did with baptism. Yeah. And uh, baptism is, uh, it, you know, it's an ordinance in the church. I mean, this is something that, mm -hmm. you know, Christians have been doing since I mean, Jesus was baptized. And, yeah. and so uh, what, a, what an amazing milestone in somebody's life. And that's why salvation Absolutely. and baptisms are mile markers that we want yeah. people to cross. And then we want them to celebrate this thing as like yeah. a, you know, a big thing. It's something you can tangibly yes. see and exactly. celebrate and yeah. yeah. And so um, I think uh, one question that we had to wrestle with is when do we baptize? So yeah. again, we had young kids that were getting saved. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we were like, well, do they really know? And, you know, should we baptize them now? Right. And and uh, you know we we we've served in student ministry and uh, and even my story personally I was baptized as a as a boy and then I mm -hmm. was rebaptized as a young adult because God did yeah. some work in my life and we're like is that good bad and mm -hmm. here's where we landed you know I think that some people will wait to baptize their children mm -hmm. um, and uh, because they really want to make sure that they understand you know that they're right. a Christian that yeah. sort of thing and then uh, and then other people will baptize immediately that's what we did. Yeah. When we read the so, book of yeah, Acts, we'll share why yeah, you decided yeah, to do that. What we do, what we did was re, we just read the book of Acts and you just see like they were saved and they were baptized. They were saved and they were baptized. Mm -hmm. There's not really a, a delay biblically. Now, um, it's not wrong if you delay, but mm -hmm. what we did for me and my house, we just said, hey, mm -hmm. we're going to baptize them. And so um, if you're listening to this or you're uh, watching this and you're thinking, okay, what do I do on baptism day? Do I just sign them up at the church and then let somebody baptize them? I would say, you know, that, that's good. That's a good minimum. But again, going back to what, I, what we started out, this is your privilege. You get to be the primary faith trainer of your kid. There's so many things that you don't need to abdicate. You don't need to outsource. You need to own it. And so let me give this the word big. You know, we're going to go big on baptism day. Okay. And this will be kind of a good, um, a good guide for us as we talk about baptism. So the B stands for baptize them. And so like you baptize them, you know, you dunk them in the water and you be the one. Like, I love that. Yes, dads should I baptize think. their babies if they can or their, their children if they can yeah. and, or, or moms if dad's not there. But yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mom and dad, you it's rise so up. so personal and I love yes. that. Right. right. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to be a pastor to baptize. I know it's really important to Trevin, our fourth son, when he wanted to get baptized, we kind of delayed with him and because he wanted to be baptized in Africa, in the Indian Ocean. And so when we That's went cool, back, yeah. I know it was amazing. And Bill had the privilege of then baptizing Trevin in the yeah. Indian Ocean, right. and it was powerful. Amen. And we have pictures and, yeah. you know, he still talks about it. And he was just in Kenya, you know, a few weeks ago, That's and awesome. he talked about, yeah. you know, remembering sure, that. So sure. that was a cool milestone. And, and I think the point is you baptize your son. Yeah. And I love that, that it doesn't have to be a pastor, that it actually, we are the pastors of our sure. own home as yes, parents, right. Right. as fathers. Yeah. Yeah. And so as I pastor my home, baptize my own kids. Yeah. And that's awesome that we why, give them. Why would you give that away? Yeah. Why, you know, Don't. like, it's like, you know, like, why would you give your newborn child into some other man's hands? Right. That's your newborn child, you know, like such precious moments. This is equally a precious moment. So mm -hmm. the B stands for you baptize them. Um, if you're baptizing kids that are scared of the water or, um, or young, uh, you may want to pretend baptize like in the bathtub or in the swimming yeah. pool. Mm -hmm. And so that's just kind of a pro tip and, um, and have some fun with that. And so, uh, you know, my kids grow, <laughs> grow up, in a, they're growing up in a pastor's house. So <laughs> I think I've baptized all of my kids. They've baptized everybody in play and, and that sort of thing. But the B stands for you baptize them. The I stands for, we're going big in baptism. The I stands for you invite people, invite mm -hmm. family, invite yeah. friends. This should be a big deal. I mean, this should be as big as a birthday at least. And so invite people, call them up because you're inviting them into an opportunity to hear the testimony mm -hmm. of your child that's saying, I'm going to follow Christ. 
And the Word of God tells us that our testimonies are so powerful that we overcome the evil ones, Revelation 12, 11, by, by the blood of the Lamb, that's Christ's work, and by the word of our testimony. And baptism at its purest form is declaring to the world, I'm a follower of Christ. It's this public display uh, of an inward de a decision to follow Christ. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's testimony 101. And so you wanna invite people. Um, and so I, I would encourage, you know, that could be a minimum of just text some people to come. Um, or you could like put together a list of people and say, hey, we're gonna, you know, we're really, really gonna arrange something where grandparents are gonna come in and uh, family's gonna come in. And then the, the G stands for go celebrate. Go That's celebrate. Right. And so you, if that, I don't know how you celebrate, that may be pork rinds and seven up, or that may be cake and, and you know, something real fancy. I have no that idea. That is pizza in exactly. the Hilda brand. In the Hilda there brand. you go. Yeah. It is pizza. Homemade pizza. Oh, yep. One of our kids, our second born, we, uh, we baptized her, by, baptized, oh, our third born, we baptized her at the, we do this big like family event at Abundant Life. And, and so we were outside, we baptized her in a horse trough and, and uh, we said, okay, where do you want to go to celebrate? You can go anywhere, she says. I want to go to Taco Bell. <laughs> so oh, we said, let's go to Taco, Taco Bell. Bell. <laughs> yeah. And I said, you get whatever you want, you know? Yeah. <laughs> You're the big spender. Big mm -hmm. spender. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the point is, is that you want to go celebrate that there should be something mm -hmm. sacred and special about this moment where when your kids look back at pictures, they see pictures of birthdays, they see pictures of soccer games, they see pictures of rugby matches sure. and ballets, but they also see pictures of uh, of spiritual milestones, of, of spiritual mile markers that you've crossed in this journey. And they said, man, you know, my parents, they may not have got everything right, but when we made spiritual decisions, they made it a big deal. And so we want you to go big. We want you to baptize them. Yep. You can register at Abundant Life if you're with us or if wherever you're watching this or listening to this, just go to your local church or go to the Indian Ocean, <laughs> you know, if that's what you want to do. But we want you to baptize them. We want you to I invite people and uh, make this a big deal. Invite, invite family members and friends to come hear uh, the testimony of your child taking their next step in faith. And then G, we want you to, to go celebrate, get some cake, get some whatever it is, some pizza, some Taco Bell, some whatever the thing is. Give them a gift and, uh, and you celebrate this huge, huge occasion in their life. That's what I would say. Mm. Love that. You know, back it up just a little bit. Um, I'm thinking, putting myself in the, the family, who has been praying, has been processing the gospel with their kids, but their kids are just rejecting it, rejecting it, and not mm. accepting this. Is it ever too late? Mm. Do you ever stop pray, yeah. praying and processing? And well, what I would say to that, Bill, is uh, you know if somebody's listening to this and they're they're in that that season, I would just say, um, you know, don't grow weary in doing good. You know, yeah. that's what the Word of God tells us um, that. Uh, that I would just first of all say, you know, my heart goes out to you, you know, if somebody's in that season, because it is weary. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you think about forever and you think about the brevity of life and, and like, God, why, 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 why won't you open the eyes of my child's heart? And I've, I've tried to do the best I can do. I was talking with a mother yesterday and we were just praying over her 19 year old daughter. And she's like, she knows she was a worshiper as a child. Yeah. And now she's, she's, you know, for some reason, something has gotten a, a hold of her heart. Mm -hmm. And she's far from God yeah. and she's just broken. And mm -hmm. I just think about the dad in Luke 15, you know, he had a prodigal son and he, he had to turn him loose. And then, you know, it says that while the son was still a far way off, the father was still looking, looking for him. Yes. Yeah. I mean, what a great picture. Absolutely. And, and that's gotta be so wearisome, yeah. but I would just say to that person, don't stop going to the front porch. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't quit looking. Don't quit hoping. If the if the tomb is empty, anything is possible. That's right. And That's right. Uh, so keep praying, keep processing. And I love that you came alongside that that lady. Grab somebody to help pray with you. Sure. Carry yeah. that burden together. You know, yeah. pray yeah. for one another. So. Yeah. The reason why maybe the whole town you know came to the festival when the prodigal came home is because the whole town knew that he was out. I love yeah. that. And so yeah. you know he didn't have to send a lot of invitations, a lot of explanation. They all knew what was going on. That's right. And that the prodigal had returned. They said, well, let's go celebrate with the father. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Well, God continues to offer hope. Mm -hmm. You know, for all of us, none of us are perfect. None mm -hmm. of us have it all down pat, you know? Mm -hmm. We're all working on this together and trying to improve and get better and do it more godly. Do it more scripturally. What does God's word say? And so right now, I just want to close with a word of prayer and thank God for the opportunity to look at these mile markers and say, mm -hmm. how can we measure this growth in our own family? 
So Lord, I thank you so much for the opportunity to sit here with Chad, but also just to share principles and promises that you offer to us. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the power of testimony, the power of prayer. And I pray that you'll help us as we process with our own kids on purpose, your gospel, your good news of salvation that transforms and change, changes lives. And so God, may they first see it in us as parents. And then may our kids see it in, in other people around. And then as they process, help them to see their need for Jesus. We love you and thank you again for the opportunity to look at these mile markers. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thank you, Chad. Yeah, Chad, thank you. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Abundant Life Family Podcast. If you found this helpful for your family, hit like and subscribe below. And feel free to drop a comment or question below. To learn more about the Abundant Life Family Ministry and the 10 mile markers to help you win at building families that last, go to our website at livingproof.co slash family.